In order to be able to change the style of the game, we have to understand what resources are. And I really mean Godot resources and not game design resources. This is the page that you find when you type Godot resources on Google. You do have two pages, one which is resources and another one which is resource, and we will actually need both. First, let's start with reminding what resources are. According to Godot's documentation, nodes are responsible for the functionality, while resources are data containers. They don't do anything on their own. Instead, nodes use data contained in resources. If we just look at this little graph here, we can see that the red nodes and the blue resources are actually working together. In other words, we've used resources without really knowing it. And actually, I'm not gonna lie, I can't remember if I did use resources on this tutorial because I changed it so many times and re recorded again and again. So I believe we didn't. So yeah, we probably used those without knowing we did. For example, the label is a node and the font in the label is a resource. In order to change the resources, we just need to assign new ones. Because what's happening is that Godot has a bunch of resources that it assigns by default to all the nodes that we use. For example, when we do create a label, we have a default font which is added to it and which is created by Godot's theme, default theme. There is just one thing which is very important with resources and it is explained in there. So, since resources inherit from ref counted, Resources are reference counted and freed when no longer in use. This is not so important, but they can also be nested within other resources except on disk. This one is quite interesting because we can use resources to create save files, and that is very important. And the second thing, which is crucial, once loaded from disk, further attempts to load a resource by resource path returns the same reference. If we put other words on that, if you have a node loading a resource and another node loading the same resource, we don't create instances of this resource. It's still one and only one resource. So editing a resource will impact the entire game. When it comes to style, it can become a problem if you try, for example, to change the font of a label, then all the labels which share the same font will be affected if you want to change the color, for example. However, it can be even more problematic when you do use resources as data containers for items, for example. But this is not really the point here. What I want you to understand is that you have to be very careful when you work with resources because once you edit those within the script, which you might not do in order to edit the theme, once you edit those within the script, it can make odd behaviors if you don't understand what you're doing. All right, let's see how this works in Godot. Let's change the user interface control node into a panel node. And a panel comes with a default style. So what do we want to do with that style? How do we edit it? Because it's a gray background. In the control properties, we do have access to two different categories, which are the theme 
and the steam overrised. So we can decide to ch assign an entire theme to it, or we can choose to just override one aspect of the theme. I want you to think about it this way. The theme is a bundle that contains all the styles for all the objects in the game. And some are going to be used by some nodes, while others will not be used by some nodes. For example, the panel node, it uses the panel properties, if you wish, of the theme collection block. And yeah, we can basically just override this one if we want to change the panel. So let's actually do this. Let's create a new style box flat, which is the most common item that we will use. So let's go back a little bit. Here, those rainbow icons, they represent different types of resources that we can create. Style box, textures, flat, line, etc. So let's create a flat one. Here we want to change the background color, so I do have a red color copy pasted. And yeah, that's pretty much it, right? If you just want to change the color background, you can change the color of the panel. If you want to change other settings, like the corner details, if you want rounded corner, that's in there. But let's not bother too much with understanding that. Here we created an anonymous resource, which is probably saved within a scene file. So if we do create another stylebox flat resource somewhere, then it's going to be a different one, a different resource with a different path. But we can choose to actually save this. Let's actually save it in our assets, in its style folders, style box flats. In there, we will have red panel, red panel. That's going to be great. Red panel. No flat, just red panel. OK. So now I can create a new scene, OK, which is going to be a new scene. And it's going to be a panel as well. This panel can have a theme override, and we can use the same style box here. And if we do actually load the one which we created, very simply, if we edit it in there and change the value to something purple, it does change the other one as well. This is what I meant when I said that editing one resource will change all the resource of the game, even though you load it and change it later on. Doesn't matter. It would be an object, it would be very different. I mean, not a ref counted object. But yeah, it seems obvious in the editor because we do know that they are the same and we are loading the same. But within the script, less obvious. I actually have a lot of problems with that and explaining that to people. So let's forget about this scene and bring it back to the red that I wanted. What we did here is just assign a new resource to a single component. If I do create another panel somewhere, like in the view, for example, if I do create a panel here, it's going to be gray. It's transparent. This is why it appears red. But it's, it has a different style, right? So do we actually want to override each and every element that we create in the game? Absolutely no. To fix this problem, we create a theme collection, which is a theme resource. So let's go in our assets and create in our theme file. Actually, this is going to be in styles and theme 
we will create a new resource, a new theme resource, which is going to be default theme. Here is the theme editor. So Godot has a default theme, which is this one, the gray one. Some people do like it, others do not. It's not really the question. The question is how do we update it? So creating a theme isn't about creating it from scratch. It is more about editing the default theme so that it becomes something new and different. Here is the preview. Okay, and on the right is the region where you change the values of different elements. In order to find elements, you can use the picker, control picker, right? To say, for example, I do want to edit a button. So this will automatically create a button component in there. However, you can go in manage items for example, to remove some you have created. Or you can also use this add a type from the list available to add new objects that you want to change. If you want to change button or if you want to change a panel. Once you add a type, it appears in the scrolling menu, in the items. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So as you can see here, we have the default values that Godot is using, and you can edit those, all right? So let's go in the panel, because that's what we've been editing so far. In the panel, we do find this panel style box flat that we found it earlier in the inspector. So again, this thing, we can actually override it by loading the panel. So here we can load the red panel that we created and instantly we can see the result on the preview right there. However, it's not applied yet because if I go in my panel and get rid of the override, it goes back to gray. This is because the theme we created is just a resource file. It does nothing more. It's never loaded. So of course we could load the theme here, but again, it would be loaded on every control node, which is pretty boring and annoying to do. Instead, we can just go in the project settings and find the theme, simply looking for theme and change the custom theme by providing a resource file, which is the default we created there. So if we restart, we can see that now the panel is properly appearing red, even though we have no theme override or theme assigned. This is all I'm going to show you in this video, because really at this point, it's just exploring what you can and you can't do. There's a lot, okay? Like even in a simple stylebox flat, there's a lot of properties you can play with. Then if you go um, create a button, for example, there are also a lot of things you can change. And yeah, I think it's up to you to just go look within those properties and find whatever looks fine for you. What makes your game look better? Eventually find some dedicated videos about how to make cool themes for Godot games. And now that I think about it, I already know that there's something I will want to do later on. So let's do it right now because it fits the video. Let's change the button focus. The button focus is, yeah, I don't like it. So I'm just gonna create a style box, which I'm gonna name, I will edit at first by making it completely transparent. And then I'm gonna save it as a transparent or invisible like this. Okay, 
And now our buttons should actually not be displaying those white lines when they are focused, right? So if I do check the line edit or the other text edit, we do see the white parts around it, but not on the button anymore. So let's actually try the game just to be sure. Those two buttons don't have the focus white line. That's great. So yeah, this is it for this episode. Nothing more. I hope you liked it and that you're going to play a little bit with the theme editor to make your game look super sexy. If you like this video, please tell YouTube that you did or in the comments so that I know. And I will see you in the next video where we will come back to making game features because now we know how to make space for those game features by creating views, buttons, navigation. And yeah, it's time to actually upgrade the game a little bit so it looks more like a game and less like a prototype. You practice, that's how you get better, and I be going. I will see you on the next episode.